we're seeing Tesla come back, play out DNIs. I'm looking forward to reacting to that one there. Let's get into this. At Wedbush, what do you mean the recovery story has begun? The comeback story for Did it Tesla. need a comeback? I think it did because they had massive headwinds in China and now we're seeing the comeback play out. Now, 2Q deliveries next week, I think that's really going to be the last uh, of really some of the worst that we've seen in China. We're starting to see a mini recovery in China. The comeback kid story for Musk is starting with, of course, RoboTax a day in August. I believe this is a stock that's going to have a massive run uh, second half of the year. What do you think has been then that headwind that you talked about? Is there one thing you could point to? Look, EV demand's clearly been soft globally, but it's really about China. I mean, China was a massive tailwind for years, became a headwind, but now, Brian, you're not seeing those price cuts anymore. So you're starting to see stabilization, China demand starting to increase. And I think the stock's telling you, and we believe next week's just another sign of it, is that the worst is in the rear view mirror for Musk and Tesla. I want to go back and, and... Do I agree with Dan Ives is the worst behind Tesla? It gets better from here. Well, if you know my stance on Tesla, that's exactly what I've been saying before we even went into this year. I've basically been saying the second half of the year, the story gets better. The first half is going to be trash across the board. And that's exactly what's played out, right? First half of the year, bad, bad, bad. And then second half of the year, I've always had an expectation that the story gets better. Revenues get better. Uh, margins get better, right? And the whole profitability story gets better and you know, all the price cuts end and all those sorts of things. And that looks like it's exactly what's gonna end up playing out. It looks like the second half of the year will get better. So it's a pos- possibility it won't happen, but it looks very likely at this point in time, my personal opinion. So yeah, that's what I've been saying honestly this whole year. Fine, you're a good guy and you roll with things. We just, you heard the top of the show, okay? And I had built these Trump and Biden portfolios that I had. In my original one, I had Tesla because I thought if, and we decided, well, we're not really sure. With Tesla, you could, here's a, if if Trump wins and and rolls back some of these EV financial incentives, don't know if he will, but let's say he did, would Tesla have a natural advantage over its customers? T-Man won't roll those back. He talks negatively in campaign speeches about EVs. Mainly, it's it's basically kind of like a for a like for show essentially, um, and it's kind of get people to feel like one side or the other, like all oh, these are the enemies. But he's not actually going to roll it back. You just watch because of its price point. In other words, are they kind of dare I say a Trumpy portfolio type company? Oh, I'd say I mean Trump pro Musk, and I'd say it's bull a, a Trump presidency would at the end of the day be bullish for Tesla, negative for EVs. Then we saw that, when you showed that across about Rivi and others, but, and I think it also speaks to the Biden administration, Musk has really been an afterthought. In a Trump administration- Well, he's been actively ignored. I mean, President Biden, I think two weeks ago, tweeting out something like, we're gonna make EVs in America. And and like he got ratioed and people are like, um, Tesla? Mm -hmm. And, and I, already does and i think if trump's in the white house musk gets more front and center that's bullish for tesla especially if you start to see those ev rebates roll back negative for the industry bullish for tesla but that's the point if something is somebody buys decides to buy an, an ev silverado from gm in part because they get 7500 bucks right if that goes away they might say, you yeah, know, I just can't pay for that. I'll, you know, I'm going to go with a Model X. And they've already scaled. If you look at their scale and you look at their pricing, they are in a massive position of strength. And that's why I think as, as you start seeing more signs of Trump presidency, yeah. that is bullish for Tesla. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say T-Man or B-Man is necessarily bullish for Tesla. The bottom line is uh, Tesla is going to put up their numbers regardless over the coming years. So and the biggest thing that will move Tesla is has nothing to do with who's the president of the United States. You know who it does? There's one man, one man that matters significantly to Tesla's demand. Do you know who that is outside of Elon? Jerome Powell, Federal Reserve. What does the Fed do with interest rates over the next few years? 
Obviously, it's gotten a lot more expensive to, to buy a car, right? Because most people buy cars on loans. And so being that the Fed has interest rates right now, Fed funds rate, by far and away the highest it's been in the past 10, 15 years, right? If he can start lowering rates, it's going to help out Tesla immensely. Anybody that sells anything high ticket, right, which is something that's five figures or more, is going to be helped out massively when interest rates are finally lowered, right? And so that's going to play out. That's going to matter more significantly than who's in the White House. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that clip here today. Listen, if you're an investor in the market and you do not feel like you're at a high enough level yet, let's say you understand some things in the market, but there's a lot of stuff that maybe you're watching my videos. You're like, I don't really understand. What exactly is that? How does this work? You know, how do I find if a stock's undervalued or overvalued? How do I understand these financial statements on a higher level? All those sorts of things that you need to understand. I want you to click on the first link in the description down there. That is an application to join my private group, which has access to all my best course curriculums to teach you everything you want to know about this game and all these things you might not fully understand it's going to teach you that okay plus access to my discord community of six and seven figure investors and myself in exclusive videos as well first link in the description down there apply and uh, once you join in there say hello to me what you're looking at in front of you right there that's a three-week chart of tesla stock the stock price is up over 25 percent just in the past three weeks. Now, for a stock to make that sort of move, there's got to be something going on here beneath the surface. And uh, there's a whole lot going on. So where we're going to start out with this video here today is China. China. So China was a hero market for Tesla for about five years. But the past year specifically, it's been a bad market. It's actually been a holdback for Tesla really specifically in the past year where it was a great growth market. They were putting up tremendous numbers there. And then really in the past year, some things kind of went south. And China's, it, China's incredibly important to Tesla. Like I don't think people really quite realize how much of Tesla's revenue comes from China specifically. Check this out here. This matters significantly. Tesla, China accounted for 22.5% of the company's overall revenue in 2023. There's very few American companies that get over 20% of their revenue from China. Tesla is one of the very few, one of the very few. Even a company like Apple, you would think Apple is very heavily reliant on China, right? Guess what? Apple's actually less reliant on China than Tesla is, which is kind of mind-blowing, right? If we look at last year's revenue for Apple, it accounted for about 19% of the company's total sales. So meaning Tesla is more reliant on China than Apple is. That's pretty shocking, right? And if you look at a company like Nike, Nike gets a significant business out of China, but that market's been bad. And China has a lot of issues that have been going on the last few years. One is they had shutdowns for too long. They went way crazy with them. The length of how long they had shutdowns going on out of Rona. I mean, there's a lot of areas of China that didn't really start to open back up until 2023, right? And so they, they stayed shut down for far too long. And then additionally, on top of that, there was a U.S. goods recession that really was in 2022 and it led into 2023 and even this year a little bit as well, whereas everybody and their grandma was out there buying everything they would get their hands on, right? In during Rona, which was 2020, 2021, all the stimulus money pumped out there. You had a period where people hadn't really been hit by inflation yet because inflation really started to hit people at the end of 21 and then obviously in 2022, 2023, and even this year a bit, right? So there was a great time for, for you know, goods. And guess where? a ton of stuff is made. China, right? You could go to any store and look at the back of the packages and guess where it's made. It's probably made in China, right? And so being that the U.S. went into kind of a goods recession as well as Europe as well, it hurt a lot of Chinese businesses in a substantial way in the Chinese economy, right? And by the way, Nike's revenue in 2024 in China is still going to be bad. And so that's been going on, right? But, but, there's a change that is just starting to transpire here that's pretty darn exciting. So this came out here today. BYD, which is a competitor to Tesla, BYD's sales rise to a record on price cuts in tech upgrades. This is good news. You might say, how is this good news? BYD is a competitor to Tesla. Their sales are, are to a record, right? We need to see these Chinese EV makers 
basically doing better sales volumes. If they're doing better sales volume, then there's a higher probability that guess what? Tesla is going to be doing higher sales volumes as well, right? In, in regards to these markets, if one company's doing really bad, then a lot of other companies are probably doing bad. Same thing on the upside. If one company's doing really good and you hear numbers, there's a decent probability other companies are doing very well as well, right? If the smartphone market is very weak in China, guess what? It's going to be very weak for Apple as well, right? So that's an important thing to understand this. But then you can say, okay, you can make an argument and you can say, BYD, they've come out with some phenomenal products. Maybe this is only BYD specific. Don't, don't count your chickens before they hatch, as they say, right? Just because BYD sales are rising to a record doesn't mean it's going to work that way for Tesla. Well, I have something to show you here. Check this out. This was out of the South China Morning Post this morning. Neo, BYD, and this company, Zeker, all reported record sales in June. Now, we, and Lee Auto also, by the way. N now, that shows clearly EV sales are coming back quite strong in China. And it's not just specific to one company like, oh, BYD is doing well. So therefore, you know, they're the only ones. No, it looks like it's all these guys, which means it's likely that Tesla is going to report really exciting numbers here recently, specifically in the month of June in regards to China as well, which is very substantial, right? Now, this is important you understand this about the Chinese EV market, okay? Listen, this market's going 100% EV and it's gonna go there in the fastest way, like talking over this decade. And the reason being is the Chinese government is f basically forcing on everybody. And if you live in China, you're not going out there to buy a new internal combustion engine. Like your thought process, in America, the thought process is still, if most people go to buy a new car, they're still thinking like a regular car, they're, you know, EVs are kind of the secondary thought in the United States right now, right? In China, it's not like that. In China, you go to buy, think about buying a new car, EV comes to mind first now at this point in time, and every other type of car comes really after that, right? China's clear as day, they want that market to be 100% EV, they really want to be the leader of EVs, and that's why you're seeing so many EV companies prop up in China, and guess what? China will be the leader in electric vehicles. They will be. Elon Musk has told us as somebody that competes in the United States and somebody that competes in China, like it's clear as day, China is going to be the EV leader. The, co the competition there is fierce, very tough, great companies, right? And so, you know, and, and I don't want to get into the whole subject of what does that mean long term for US based companies like General Motors and Ford and some of these others, right? I don't know. All I know is that market's going EV, as all markets are, by the way. It's just China's going to go there the fastest. And this is a market where 20 million plus vehicles a year are sold. So that, that's some food for thought. So now Tesla rises ahead of the Q2 deliveries report, right? On um, basically the thought that Tesla deliveries are going to be uh, getting better and better. And so this is part one of really a seven part story here, but it's part one of the story gets better in the second half of 2024, which is a call I made going all the way back to the second half of last year, right? I told you guys, I'm expecting the second half of 2024 to be, uh, you know, basically the story gets better and better for Tesla. We bought them out everything in the first half, the numbers, the deliveries, the margins, the profitability, all those sorts of things bought them. And then they start to get better and better and better as we go throughout the second half, right? But you, in order to do that, you have to see demand stability and you have to see demand uptick. And we're starting to get the early signs of demand stability and demand uptick here, which is very, very important. So then as we get into the second half, which now we're in the, actually the first day today, the day I'm recording this is the first day of the second half of 2024, then we can feel confident about the numbers building and building, building, things getting better, year over year increases, those sorts of things, right? Very, very important. Now that leads us to part two of Tesla and what's going on with the stock and where the stock's going is Tesla excitement is starting to come back. Well, let's not forget Tesla is one of the most exciting companies in the world in terms of what they're working on, the projects, the engineering team at that company, right? It's fabulous. And we're starting to see the glimpses of the excitement come back for Tesla, which is actually very, very important for the overall brand of Tesla and how people view this. Tesla will showcase Cybertruck and Optimus Generation 2 in China. 
Tesla will showcase its all-electric pickup, the Cybertruck, and Optimus Generation 2, the humanoid robot, at the 2024 World Artificial Intelligence Conference in Shanghai, China, later this week. It's actually on July 4th, the same day we're doing the massive sale on, on 1000X, right? They're going to showcase some of the biggest brands in the world and their best products, and Tesla's going to be bringing a Cybertruck and showing off the uh, Generation 2 of Optimus. So that is very, very exciting. Very, very exciting. This is this is what we need from Tesla, right? We need that excitement to come back around this brand. Now, continued part two, right, is guess what? It's July now. Next month is the big month. August 8th is RoboTaxi Day, which, so, you know, some people are calling maybe the most important day in Tesla's history. To me, the most important day in Tesla's history was the day they showed off Model 3 because that took the company from, like, oh, this is just some niche automaker to like, oh, they're going to become a big auto company, right? So that to me is always like the most important Tesla day. But this could very well be the second biggest day, in my personal opinion, in Tesla's history when they show off that RoboTaxi product and, and what the plans are there, execution timelines and things like that. And so that's another level of excitement coming back to Tesla, the cool coming back to Tesla, right? All those sorts of things. Now, additionally, part two continued is Elon Musk, is doing the things we want Elon Musk to do, okay? This came out nine days ago here on YouTube. Everyday astronaut posts this. 2.5 million views now at this point in time. First look inside SpaceX's Star Factory with Elon Musk. Elon Musk gave this gentleman a tour of the Star Factory. And even though SpaceX is a whole different company from Tesla, the brand is it gets melted onto Tesla, right? And so this is the stuff we love to see from Elon Musk. We want to see Elon Musk be a nerd, like be, you know, a legendary, you know, uh, like futuristic, like nerd, but like we can call it, right? And that's cool. Like, that's what we like. That's Elon Musk a lot of people fell in love with. That's the Elon Musk that, you know, became kind of a mega celebrity, actually, right? The Elon Musk that has been over the last couple of years kind of a distraction, getting more into politics, and, and that's just an ugly world. You're never going to win in that space. We know that, right? And, um, you know, that that's a whole situation. And so this the Elon Musk we need, and it seems like he's starting. Keyword is starting. Can't get too excited, but it seems like he's starting going down that route again, which is great. Because that, I'm telling you guys, that's the Elon Musk everybody actually wants to see, right? We have so many other freaking politicians out there that can say this and say that. We don't need another politician. We need Elon Musk to be Elon Musk. Because there's only one Elon Musk in this world. There's a million guys that can make Republican um, comments and d Democrat comments. There's a million of those guys. A dime a dozen. There's one Elon Musk. There's one guy pushing space travel to, you know, extraordinary boundaries like it's incredible what they're doing at spacex right and it's incredible what they're doing at tesla there's one elon musk there's a million guys that can comment on politics we don't need another freaking one okay and so it's great to see elon musk starting to get back on the right track let's hope that continues no additionally part three here volume ramp of cyber trucks coming right and this is going to start to be very positive for numbers in the back half of the year for tesla not only in terms of on the revenue front as the volume picks up but additionally what we're going to likely see is i think cybertruck could start to become margin accretive to tesla whereas i think in the first half of the year my personal opinion is it's, it's actually hurting margin it's actually hurting profitability whenever tesla goes to ramp a new vehicle it's usually ugly they're usually losing money on all those vehicles they sell for that first six to nine months and then they start to make a little money and then as volume gets bigger and bigger you start to make more money more money your margins start to increase quite dramatically even if you don't go up on price just because of the volume that's going uh, forward there so this is going to be big i'm looking very forward to that now it leads us into part four of tesla we're going to have tax credit fomo likely start especially in the fourth quarter of this year. So there's a pretty decent probability T-Man's going to become reelected, right? And so there's going to be FOMO that starts to build around, oh, T-Man's going to take, T-Man doesn't like EVs, so he's going to take away the tax credits, right? And so once everybody starts talking about that, there's going to be, I think, a big push. And by the way, I don't know if T-Man will actually take away the tax credits or not. Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. I don't know. But one thing I do know is there's going to be a huge FOMO cycle that starts to build. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if the fourth quarter deliveries for Tesla 
or extraordinarily high because so many people are going to be concerned that T-Man is going to be taking away the tax credits. And so just remember who told you this first because that's going to be big here, okay? Now, in terms of that tax credit right now, basically it's up to $7,500. It's not a small amount of money, up to $7,500, right? And you, the, the trick is you just got to be making less than $300,000 as a married couple. So for the 5% of people that are watching this video right now and you're a baller and you make, you know, more than $300,000 a year, you know, you're, you can't get this tax credit, unfortunately. But for other people, they can. And so I'm telling you, it's going to be a huge FOMO cycle, especially if it looks more and more probable like Team Man's going to win the election. And then once the election happens, if Team Man does win, ooh, December could be nuts for FOMO because everybody's going to be running with the narrative about T-Man's going to get be getting rid of the tax credits. And I'm telling you, it's going to be wild, wild. Tesla could put up their biggest delivery numbers ever in the fourth quarter of this particular year. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. Now, part five, part five is around margins. So if you know my opinion, you know, I've told you guys, I believe margins reverse in the second half of this year and start going up again which is going to be very, very exciting. You're looking at a trailing 12 month of gross margins and you're looking at a trailing 12 month of operating margins. It's very, very clear over the last year or two where these margins have gone. They've gone down and down and down. And there was one of the really exciting things about investing in Tesla. And one of the reasons the stock had such a insane parabolic run wasn't just that all oh, this company's a future, all oh, this company's revenues are skyrocketing. It was this company's margins or like something we've never seen before in an automaker. And they kind of took the company out of an automaker category and really put it into just people kind of viewing it as a tech company. Well, as the margins have gone down and down and down over the last couple of years, people are starting to say, oh, it's just an automaker. It's just another automaker that their margins are going to be horrible. And next thing you know, their margins are going to be right there with Ford and GM and Volkswagen and Toyota and all these other companies, right? We can't have that. If the, one of the things that makes Tesla special is like a trillion dollar plus opportunity in terms of where they can go with their revenues over the next decade, but also simultaneously like be the highest margin company we've ever seen by a mile in the, in the auto space, right? That's what makes Tesla magical. And so we need to see Tesla's margin start to improve in the back half of this year. And if we do that, ho oh, ho baby, are we going to be rolling in regards to this one? That leads us to part six. We're going to see likely a major uptick in services revenue in the second half of this year. Now, why do I feel like we're going to see a big uptick in services revenue in the back half of this year? Well, a few reasons. First off, if you think about the, if you think about the first half of the year, what was Tesla doing? They gave almost their entire customer base free full self-driving for a month. Okay. Now, Probably a lot of people did the full self-driving, enjoyed it, and then probably didn't stay signed up for it, right? That's what happens when you give a free trial like that, like a lot of people are. But there's going to be a pretty de decent portion of people that are going to stay signed up for that. I don't know if it's 5% of people that got the trial, 10%, 20%, 40%, 50%. I don't know what the percentage is going to be, but it's going to be a pretty big number. And so just from the FSD amount of people in the back half of the year, subscription revenue start to pour in. It's going to be pretty substantial for revenue and, and, uh, and for the services revenue specifically. And then additionally, on top of that, more and more vehicles, more bigger and bigger fleet, older and older fleet, right? Guess what? Cars end up going out of warranty. They end up, you know, having this little problem, that problem, things got to get fixed and it comes out of customers' pockets, right? And so a lot of Tesla vehicles have been under warranty because they've been sold in the last few years. But those, you know, if now if you bought a car at Tesla in 2019, 2020, even some that are in 2021, they might be going out of warranty because you're probably over on miles or over on, on years, right? And so that's another food for thought in regards to that. So the services revenue, you're going to start to see a major uptick there. And then keep in mind, additionally, the other automakers that sell EVs, now a lot of them are going to start using Tesla's supercharging network in the back half of the year. Some of them already have started, but a lot will be used in the back half of the year. So the services revenue, you're going to see pretty insane growth, in my opinion, in the back half of the year, which is going to be very, very exciting to those the third quarter numbers and the fourth quarter numbers, right? That leads us to part seven of the Tesla story. FSD shock and awe. If you experience FSD, it's already incredibly impressive, right? It drives a little bit like a grandma still. But it's incredibly safe and it's pretty shockingly good. But with that being said, we're going to likely get high version 12s out in the back half of the year. My guess is being seeing how fast FSD is getting exponentially better, I think we're going to 
likely see some more shock and awe when it comes to FSD. We could potentially get, uh, you know, uh, volume 13, version 13. We could potentially get that in the back half of the year. I don't know. But one thing I do know is we're going to see major improvements there. And the, the, the pace of improvement in FSD is exponential right now. So I think more and more people are going to be waking up to, oh my gosh, like Tesla's going to actually solve FSD. It's just, they got to make it a little bit more drive like a human, <laughs> which, which is sad, but it, it, it needs to drive a little bit more dangerous, actually. I know it sounds ridiculous, but, you know, it, it's got to be a little quicker with the stop and then go and not drive too much like a grandma. And so if they can get that last version, like, oh my gosh, it's going to be shock and awe when it comes to kind of FSD and more and more people realize this is a real deal. Like Tesla's going to solve this baby, right?